Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards here for Pour Some Stamps and I'm so excited to be bringing you this fun Easter card today. So I am using the gorgeous exceptional stamp set, that's egg exceptional, <laughs> and the Radiant Burst Background Stencil. I haven't used this one yet and I was really excited to try it out. So off camera, I've gone ahead and colored and cut out all of my little Easter eggs. Now I did something a little bit different today. I wanted these to look like foiled eggs. So you know, like the chocolate eggs that you get wrapped in foil. So I used my metallic gel pens to color these today. Something a little bit different and outside my comfort zone. Um, I'm not sure that they turned out perfectly, but I think they look kind of cool. I definitely think they look like foiled eggs, which was the plan, so I'm um, happy with that. <laughs> so now I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that measures, I believe I, I had it originally cut down to five and a quarter by four inches. I ended up trimming that further down, but um, that's what I started out with. So I'm using that to do some ink blending on. So I have my Radiant Burst stencil here and I put it down and then I was like, hold on a second, I'm going too fast. I pulled the stencil back up again, here, you'll see here in a second, and <laughs> realized that I have to actually add some color to my background first. So I'm going in with this Distress Oxide in Squeezed Lemonade. I love this color, it's a beautiful, bright, um, citrusy yellow color perfect for spring, perfect for Easter. And I'm just blending that all over my background relatively lightly. And you can see I've got that grassy piece, which I'm gonna use at the bottom. So I'm not too bothered about the bottom. Now I'm gonna bring my stencil out and <laughs> place it down with the magnets. And this is where I'm gonna to go to town with this ink. So really heavy handed, brushing it on through that stencil. And I'll just keep going here until I have everything covered that I need to have covered, obviously not worrying too much about that bottom piece. And once that's done, I lift the stencil and you get this gorgeous big reveal. And doesn't that look amazing? It's so cool, I love it. Uh, so I'm gonna go on to my little grassy piece here. So I've just cut this with a grassy die and I'm gonna use mowed lawn and Lucky Clover Distress Oxide inks. So starting out with that mode lawn, which is kind of the lighter of the two colors, and I'm just gonna rub that all over this grassy piece. So I like to hold my cardstock down with a piece of, um, well not with a piece of, but with some um, removable adhesive. And I just find that that works really, really well if I hold it down to my um, ink blending mat there. Um, with that adhesive, then I can just kind of not worry about it moving around and wriggling around and getting my fingers in it. Now I'm pulling out my splatter box and I have these kind of, this is just a cheap set of watercolor paints that I got off Amazon. Um, and it has these lovely metallic colors in it. So I've got this metallic kind of white color in it. It's got a nice sheen to it, but it's quite pale. So I'm gonna go back in again with just a plain white. Um, so this will give it a bit more of a, um, a definite kind of splattered look if you like, but that metallic one gives it a nice sheen. So I'm doing both of these colors and holding it up here. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. It will be more apparent the more it dries. Uh, I decided I needed to add a little bit more, <laughs> as always is the case. And then I'm gonna do the same with this little grassy piece that I have. So using the exact same colors, that metallic white and then just the regular white now I use a box here. This is just an old empty box that I have as my kind of splatter mat because it stops that paint getting everywhere. And I just pull this out and just keep it under my craft desk and pull it out whenever I need it. So you can see there, I've done the same for my little grassy piece. I'm just having trouble picking it up, but hopefully you can see that nice splatter detail. Once that had all dried, obviously make sure it does dry because you don't want to smear and smoosh everything. Um, I'm going to start assembling my card. So I have my eggs there. I have this little basket that I've cut from a die that I have in my stash, and I'm gonna use that for my little eggs to sit in. So it's gonna be a nice Easter scene, and my little eggs are sitting in the basket, in the grass, in the sunshine, hopefully not melting. Hopefully it's not too hot. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna use some tape runner here, or some like kind of glue tape stuff um, that I've got just to add to the back of that basket so that I can start placing my little eggs down inside it. 
So once I was happy that I had enough on there, I'm normally quite heavy handed and this was no exception. I um, just started grabbing eggs and popping them in the basket. So I kind of just wanted to make sure that they lined up with the base of the basket and didn't poke outside the edges because obviously if the basket really was metal, they wouldn't be able to do that. And I'm poking some in through the top and I'll just stack them up one on top of the other. Now, one thing that I did notice as I was doing this, if I used that tape runner on the front of my eggs, on the kind of part that I'd colored with my metallic gel pen, it did lift the color slightly. Obviously, metallic gel pen is different to Copic markers. Um, this definitely doesn't do this on the Copic markers, but it did do it on the gel pen. So if you're using gel pen and you're using a tape runner like I did, just be a little bit careful. Um, obviously, I wasn't too worried because the places that I was placing that tape down were getting covered anyway, but just be aware it did lift slightly. So um, yeah, you want to be a little bit careful about that. <laughs> Having not used gel pens before for this type of thing, I hadn't kind of realized that that would be the case. So now that all of my baskets are kind of piled there and my, um, sorry, all my eggs are piled on my basket. Did I say my basket's piled on my eggs? <laughs> um, I'm going to start popping everything down. I'm just going to hold them there um, without actually gluing anything down while I put my sentiment on. So this stamp set has these gorgeous sentiments and beautiful script. And I'm using the one that says Easter blessings. And I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I'm pulling out my powder bag here, which I eventually managed to get out and add, adding a ton of powder because I'm always paranoid about the embossing powder going everywhere. Then I'm going to pull out my Versamark ink, stamp that down, and um, I just love it. I think it's gorgeous. Then I'm going to use this um, embossing powder that I've had for years. It's called Stampin' Stuff Detail Gold Embossing Powder. Um, I have had it, I think, for about 10 years. <laughs> I haven't used very much of it. So um, it was really nice to pull it out and use it. And actually, it, it's working great. So it's still in good condition. Um, and it is really nicely detailed um, embossing powder. So it worked beautifully for the sentiment. So I'm going to heat up my heat tool here and get it nice and hot. And then I'm going to go and into the back first. I like to do that first and then blast the front so that I get this lovely gold sentiment. And I just thought it worked really, really nicely. So I was debating whether to put my basket in front of the grass or behind the grass. I decided in the end to put it behind, uh, sorry, put it in front of the grass rather than behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that grassy piece down just with some liquid glue. And then I will attach my basket on top and it will all kind of fit in nicely. I just love it. I'm using some foam squares for my basket here so that it just pops up from the background a little bit and adds a bit of dimension without being kind of overwhelming. But I just thought that it gives it a nice little bit of something extra to what is relatively a simple card. That stencil in the background though, wow, that really makes things pop. I'm gonna be using the stencil a ton can tell you it's amazing I love it <laughs> so I've put that down it's all set then I decided to trim things down a little bit more make it even slimmer even smaller so I cut it down eventually I went to three and three quarters by five inches so that I have a nice border I'm using a kind of creamy colored cardstock I've got a nice border all the way around it I'm just going to attach that card panel down onto the card base using some liquid glue and once that is done, that is pretty much my card complete. I'm just making sure that I get it centered up nicely. This is the bit I always struggle with, making sure I smoosh it down, it's all attached, and there we go. Hopefully you can see that shine from that metallic gel pen there. So I really hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you come back and please feel free to leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care.